What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at message boxes for TTK Bootstrap and Kinter. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at message boxes for TTK Bootstrap. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF version of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that out right to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com, get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at message boxes for TTK Bootstrap. So we click this button, boom, a little box pops up. Uh, it's got a little message, a little title, a little icon. We can click yes or no. If we click no, hey, you click no. If we try it again and click yes, hey, you click yes. Now, there are a bunch of these different dialog boxes that you can use. You can ask questions, you can show warnings, you can give info, all that stuff. We're going to look at all of that in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and then get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this TTK Bootstrap series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic starter code that we've always got. We're using the superhero theme. We've imported TTK Bootstrap as TB. We pip installed that many videos ago. And the first thing we need to do here is import something. So let's go from TTK Bootstrap dot dialogues. So this is basically a dialogue box, right? So we want to import message box. Now there are other things you can import like message dialogue, but we don't need that for this video, but it's a similar sort of pop-up box. And maybe we'll talk about that in another video. So, okay. Now the next thing you're going to notice is this root icon bitmap. Now this is the little icon that shows up when we run this file. So if we save this, I'm calling this mbox.py, head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run python mbox.py. That icon is this little icon right up here designated. That's the icon, right? So when we have a message box pop up, it will have its own icon, but it'll just show the default TTK bootstrap icon unless you make a little bit of a change right here. So we need to copy this line and let me say uh, message box icon here. And it's the same exact code. We just set a default equal to this, right? Now you might think, hey, do we need this line anymore? Yeah, we do. We can comment this out. And if we run this again, we're going to get no icon basically here, just the default thing, right? So we have to keep both of these lines. It's really kind of weird. I have no idea why that's the case. Uh, but let's say right here, main app icon. And then here we've got the message box icon. So, okay, that's good. So now let's build out this app. So let's create a button. I'm just going to call it my button. It's going to be a TB dot button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say, click me. Woohoo. And let's give this a boot style of, I don't know, danger to make it red and a command of, I don't know, clicker, right? So, so every time this button gets pressed, we want to run the function clicker. So we don't have that yet. We'll create that in just a second. But for now, let's my underscore button dot pack, put this guy on the screen. Let's give this a pad Y of 40 to really push it down the screen. So there's our button. And here we need to define our clicker function here. And we'll do that in just a second. Now, I also want to create a quick little label. So I'm going to call this my underscore label. This is going to be a TB dot label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing for now. And let's give this a font of, I don't know, like Helvetica size 18, just to make it bigger so that we can read it easier. And then let's my underscore label dot pack. And I don't know, give this a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen a little bit. Probably don't need to do that, but okay. So now we've got this function called clicker. And every time you press this button, we call this function. So what do we want to do? Well, let's create a dialogue. So I'm going to call this MD short for message dialogue or MB short for message box, whatever. It doesn't really matter at all. And this is going to be a message box. Now here we have to designate what type of message box we want. So uh, let's go. Yes. No, there's like, I don't know, eight or nine of these. We'll go over all of them in a second. Uh, but for now, we'll just do yes, no. And let's create a list of these. So let's go yes, no. And I'll, I'll add these as we go through them all. So here we could say uh, display some message here. This is going to be the message that pops up in the middle of the box. So whatever you want to display in your message box, type it in there. And then here is the title. So this will go on the title bar up at the top, right? So, okay, that looks good. Now, 
for now, let's just run this and see what we have. So let's save this, head back over to our code, run this guy again. So here we've got this thing, we click it, boom. It says display some message here. Here's the title. You'll notice there's our little icon up there and we have a yes or a no. Well, if we click no, what happens? Well, we don't know yet. So what does happen? Well, let's come down here and uh, display button click, All right? So let's go my underscore label dot config. And we want to set the text equal to, and I'm just going to create an F string. And then I'm going to say you clicked. And then inside of here, we're just going to go MB. So whatever you clicked here, we'll get assigned to this variable and it will output right there. So let's go ahead and save this head back over here, run this guy again. So we click me. So now when we click yes, it says you clicked yes. When you click no, it says you click no, right? So basically, if you click yet yeah, no, it's returning the word NO, capital NO. Now this is just a string. Now you can do stuff based on that, right? So you could do an if statement, right? So let's go if MB equals no, then, you know, we could print no or whatever you wanted to do. Else you would, you know, print yes. Like whatever you wanted to do, you could do right there, right? So let me just comment all this out because it's kind of silly, but this is just an example of how you can do stuff logically based on what the person selects, right? Now, each of these things we're gonna talk about, yes, no is the first one. There's lots of different message boxes. Each one returns a different thing. So you have to know what it returns in order to do your if else logic correctly. And we'll see that in just a second. So, all right, but for now, I'm just going to, let's copy this and just, we'll just print out, you clicked whatever, just to see what each of these things do. So, okay, the first one was yes, no, we looked at that one. Uh, the next one is okay, right? So we'll just type in message box dot okay. If we save this guy and run it and click here, now it says the button is just okay. And if we click this, it says you clicked none. Now this actually returns the word none, right? So it's a string, it's just none. You would do your logic if, you know, MB equals none, do this else, do something else, right? So, okay, that's kind of interesting, I guess. The next one is okay cancel. So let's come down here and okay cancel. You'll never guess what this one does, right? <laughs> Maybe you will guess. It does okay or cancel, right? So if you click okay, it says you clicked okay. If you click cancel, it says you clicked cancel, right? So it's returning okay or cancel. All right, so that's okay cancel. Now, obviously, whatever you wanna do in your app, that's gonna determine which of these you use, right? If you want to give the user the ability to cancel or click okay, you would use okay cancel. If you want them to answer a question, yes or no, you would use yes or no, right? If you just wanna give them a message and have them close it, you might just use okay. Right? It just determine, it just depends on what you're trying to do in your app, right? So okay, the next one is show info. So actually this is show underscore info. In regular Kinter, it's show info without an underscore. And in TTK Bootstrap, for some reason, it's show underscore info. I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's what it is. So again, we can come up here. And here it says display some message here, but it has this little icon, this little info right? You're showing info. This is the little info icon, right? And if you click OK, it returns none. So, OK, maybe you want the little icon info icon to pop up. If so, you would use show info, right? Uh, we also have show error, right? So this one's actually kind of interesting, right? Because uh, if, you know, if you're doing error handling in your app and you want to show an error that's popped up, you would probably want to use this. And this is nice because I don't know if you could hear that or not. It made a little ding. It went da -da ding, a little warning ding. And it also has this big red X like warning, right? So that's interesting. If we click OK, it returns again, none. So, all right, that's cool. So, OK, that's cool. Let's show error. And we also have show underscore question. So we can change this one to show underscore question. Save this guy. Put it to the screen. It's getting unruly. Run this guy again. And here we get this little question mark and we get yes or no. Now, if we click yes here, it says yes. If we click no, it says no. Again, you'll hear, you'll hear maybe it'll pick it up on the microphone. A little ding and ding, right? So that's what that does. 
So, all right, that's cool. Oh, that was interesting. Let's run that again. I probably should have mentioned that. If you click yes, it returns yes. If you turn, click no, it returns no. If you come up here and hit, click the little X, it does none. So keep that in mind. That's the case for all of them as well. So, okay, that's cool. Let's start another line here. And the next one is show underscore warning. Show underscore warning is very similar to show underscore error. So let's run show underscore warning. Save this guy. Run him again. But instead of a big red X, you get this sort of uh, warning, like, ah, uh, sort of like, uh, almost like a traffic sign, but with an exclamation mark. And when we click OK, it, it's none. When we click the X here, it also returns none. So, all right. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I feel like there's one or two more. So what, do we, what else do we have? So we did yes, no. We also have yes, no, cancel. So this is very much like yes, no, yes, no, cancel. But instead of two buttons, you have three buttons, which is kind of interesting. So if we run this guy, we get yes, no, and cancel. If we click yes, you click yes. If we click no, you click no. Uh, if we click cancel, we get cancel. And again, if we click the X, we get none. So, all right, that's interesting. Finally, one more, we have retry and cancel. All right, so this is kind of interesting. We have retry, cancel, and I'm guessing you could probably guess what this one's gonna do. <laughs> it's not rocket science here. We have retry and cancel. And if we click retry, it returns the word retry. And if we click cancel, it returns the word cancel. So that's pretty much it. And none if you click the little X in the top. So those are message boxes. Very, very useful, very cool, very easy to do. And uh, that's kind of all there is to it. If you want to learn more about these, you can go to, let's see, ttkbootstrap.readthedocs.io and click on API and then come down here to message box. And it has each of them listed here. So here's the OK one. Here's the uh, OK cancel one. And it has all the different little attributes you can play around with, right? Whether to ring, whether to ring the bell or not, the title, the message, we've already did those two. So you can come through here and read all these if you're interested. But we pretty much hit the main points and uh, that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your totally free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You can get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tcantry.com and I'll see you in the next video.